Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Deloitte's new podcast on uh, cybersecurity training and education. Today with me we have uh, Timea Pahi, an associate focusing on uh, cyber exercises and uh, GRC, and uh, Nicola Schneider, senior manager focusing on uh, cybersecurity strategy. Uh, why is it important in today's landscape to talk about training and education uh, for institutions? Well, I would say that in the last couple of years, especially after the COVID, we've seen that year over year we have double digit increases in the cyber attacks. So it's continuously incre- the continuously increasing. And I would say in the last year we have, I would say, even 20% year over year growth. And uh, although we have, I would say, all the new technologies and tools in place to protect us, you know, to reduce the threat landscape of the institutions, I would say that uh, human factor is still one of the most contributing factors to that uh, breaches. One of the recent uh, information is tell- that we have published in the media is telling us that human factor is contributing to data breaches of- for over 95 percent. So human factor is continuously contributing to the to the to the data breaches. And I would say that that is mostly due to some kind of errors, intentional, unintentional, or some kind of social engineering that engineering that is in uh, that's in behind. So I would say that's continuously increasing. And what we see is also that uh, not a lot of companies, especially when we look of uh, our clients, we've seen that uh, I would say two thirds of clients do not see the need for any education. So they're not they're not seeing any benefit in investing in education of their internal staff. If we talk about role-based trainings for IT guys, security teams, or we're talking about some kind of uh, all-staff trainings to raise our awareness within that company. Yes, and to ad- addition to that, thank you, Nicola. We also saw on the Deloitte surveys that in the ranking two and threes, always uh, training and education. If we are looking for how big is the impact of cyber to the company success, and it is essential. So that's why in this uh, evolving threat landscape, we have to be prepared for the latest uh, threats and we have to always retrain and train again the employees how to react. And as you said it, Nicola, in the first line of the attack are still the employees. So that's why it is so important to yeah, keep moving because the threat landscape is evolving, then we have to be adapt also the people and uh, enhance their skills. And do we have the necessary critical cybersecurity competencies? It's a good question. So what we see in the last years that there is a lack of uh, uh, cybersecurity personnel. So that's why it is also important for companies that they have the ongoing trainings for their employees. And in that case, they can on a long term have these people that they can protect their organizations and also the critical services that they are focusing on. Yeah, I would continue to your thoughts, Dimea. I would say that when we talk about our clients, I would say that most of them have, you know, missing a lot of employees dealing with IT. So some kind of IT security specialist, IT specialist. So we're talking about like in the EU, like uh, half a million uh, professionals missing. So one way is, as Dimea mentioned, put it, is to invest in current work for, workforce that we have, you know, to make it more professional, to invest in them and their expertise in order for them to be, I would say, uh, to, for them to be have sufficient uh, capabilities to address the current threats, the current needs to, to I would say, uh, manage the current tools that we have. So technology we are dealing with is continu- continuously changing. So we need to keep in track with that and retest uh, what we know year over year. How do new technologies like AI uh, come into the picture? So, as you said, that we have always evolving technologies like AI. AI is a hot topic now. And because of AI, we have a lot of uh, automated attacks. I would say that also we have also in the organization uh, even more infra- in- even more information and the speed of the attacks is also accelerating. So that's why we have to be prepared also on the defense side to take this speed and make also maybe more automated attacks and so on. And if we go back to the training, we have to also prepare for, for instance, also the SOC analysts and also DORA and NIST to emphasizing the role-based trainings, for instance, that we have the skilled 
and trained personnel for their specific roles and responsibilities. Yeah, um, I mean, although it's new technology, I would say new trend in the market. And I would say that some of the companies already started to, to do the trainings, you know, specific targeted trainings like cybersecurity uh, tabletop exercises in order to manage those type of the events, you know, some kind of AI threats. So one of our recent example is financial institution that we are dealing with, we are working with in the last couple of years. They identified this as a trend. They've seen in the market that they, there were several compromises in uh, using AI, especially focusing on the management board. And I would say uh, individuals which have more, more information in the public space, you know, on the YouTube and similar channels with a lot of information is available to the public and for the attackers it's easy to i would say to create sophisticated attacks that can easily uh, trick you know even experienced uh, professionals so i would say although it's new technology it's good to start over to see to i would say to do it in advance for you to be aware of the i would say potential uh, vulnerabilities that you may have and so you can have all it i would say uh, at least some time you know to specialize and to uh, make you more resilient to those type of talk, type of the attacks. So training on the from the management board to the, I would say professional that we have in organization as the man put it, so kind of who can then support our staff in recognizing those type those those type of the attacks. So we can I would say move forward and make our more make us more resilient in the end. And we were also uh, doing also trainings based on these uh, fake news, fake calls, these uh, deep fakes. And it is also a hot topic for the customers because uh, what we see also the third party risk is also there. They are also getting targeted attacks, uh, AI powered uh, attacks. And as you said, also the sea level is getting these uh, AI powered attacks. And that's why we were also doing this um, awareness raising campaign that uh, it is so easy to impersonate uh, CISOs of the company. And uh, that's why they have to be sure how to keep moving that, okay, the technology is more advanced and how to be aware that we should avoid these pitfalls. Got it. Uh, how can the cybersecurity education impact the long-term resilience of companies? Mm -hmm. So we were talking about that there is a lack of cybersecurity professionals and um, also organizations have to think long-term and that's why it is really important for building up resilience in an organization. So if we are looking for the compliance side, then we have once DORA, Article 11 and 13 that they said that we will need role-based uh, training for the personnel. We are focusing on their critical roles, responsibilities, and we have special uh, education for them. Also in the cyber um, academy, we make them curriculum that is fits their needs and uh, based on their roles. And on the other hand, we have the NIS Article 20 emphasizes that we need the personal training, focusing on their skills and not just focusing on the skills, but we have to um, have that they have the drill. If an incident is happening, that they know what is to do and they know, OK, this is my responsibility and this is uh, my place and my time to take an action. Although the regulation is the main, I would say, uh, enforcer of this new, new, I would say, educations, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be because uh, I would say, look at the best practices and, and to see what is the contributing factor to all these attacks and focus on education. And as I put it, make it more customized because not all educations are for all employees. You know, make it more target targeted and customized for certain types of individuals, ter certain types of uh, uh, institutions, because some kind of financial institution in, re in various regions may have different threat landscapes. So customize the trainings and uh, exercises based on the specific client, because I would say going with, you know, some kind of blanket approach, it may fit some needs in the in the short term, you know, make you more, com make you make you more compliant with certain regulation. But in the end, it will make you vulnerable as before, you know, you won't, you won't, I would say, reduce any risk that you are facing. You mentioned the customization. How can we customize cybersecurity training to enhance the learning? So in the last decades, we have a lot of different uh, uh, things happening and we never know that, okay, pandemic, uh, the social political situation that can uh, have such a huge impact on organizations and 
so there are a lot of real world examples that uh, provide us um, re uh, really uh, hands on examples, but there are also lucky organizations that they survive this uh, um, part. And for instance, because we have a lot of uh, customers, that's why we have a lot of experience what can go wrong. And in that case, we can also make other customers customized um, uh, scenarios for, for the training. Okay. What key regulatory and compliance considerations should we think about in relationship to DORA or NIS2? We mentioned DORA and NIS2 as the latest regulation that we, may, that we have. And DORA is already in force. NIS2 is, I would say, coming into force depending on the country we're talking about. But I would say when we have those two regulations, we have strong, em strong emphasis on the education as building a resilient organization. So if we talk about DORA regulation, we have specific requirement to have budget in place that has to be approved by the management board or any senior management of the company to have uh, you know some kind of awareness training for all staff and to have uh, operational to training trainings to ensure operational resilience you know so it's some kind of role based trainings for each each i would say professional organization whether they're dealing with risk uh, security issues handling incidents so all depending on their i would say area of expertise they need to have sufficient trainings to enhance their capabilities uh, on the other side we have nis2 i would say they're overlapping in those areas because they're both talking about uh, b uh, conducting awareness campaigns you know to make the all staff more aware of the current threats and in the nis2 we have highlighting highlighted that professionals need to have education so again we have some kind of i would say repetition so to speak in both both regulations focusing on these new educations for that individual because if somebody is expert in some area they can additionally be you know uh, educated and trained uh, in their area and to make it make them more prof more professional i would say and be more i would say knowledgeable about the current trends because they're changing year over year you know if we talk about five years beha b uh, back a was ai was just you know some kind of a nickname you know some, something that came, came by and now we are i would say having you know small children uh, with sufficient capabilities to do something with an ai yeah thank you nicolas so if you are talking about dora just to to sum up so we have the article 11 focusing on the the role-based training and we have article 11 which mandates that we have to have regular tests on resilience and it means that not just we have the education and the training for the employees but we have to make the test that we okay if something is happening that everybody knows how to do it so my favorite example for it that it is like in a military so an organization have to do okay what is the command so we have to have a common language we have to have a chain of comments and we have to do who is doing what in a, a during an incident and that's why we need also just uh, not just the theoretical part, but also the practical part, uh, using tabletop exercises or technical uh, exercises to see, okay, that everybody knows their parts and they can protect and uh, defend the attacks that we are facing today on a daily basis. And if we are talking about not just the financial institutes, but we are talking about um, essential and important uh, entities, then we have NIST 2 and there is also the Article 20 that, that emphasizes that we need uh, the training, the uh, cyber resilience training for the, for the employees. And yeah, in the Cyber Academy, we are focusing, as you said, the customized uh, training for these uh, organizations and all, all these roles. And in that case, they have also the proof, okay, that they already did the uh, trainings and they have already did uh, the tests on a regular basis. So that's why we are going for this holistic view at Deloitte. And how can Deloitte help, Nicola? As the, as the man mentioned, I'm, I mean, we are working with multiple clients already because we have, for example, Dora already in force and a lot of institutions are, are, are I would say, facing uh, or trying to achieve compliance within this year. So we are helping a lot of our clients with education and awareness campaigns for different type of the, I would say, roles. One of the most, I would say, uh, uh, 
interesting one is to maybe to mention is to have specific education for the management management body of the institutions on the risk on ICT risk management. I would say in the previous years we had a lot of uh, regulation on risk in the financial institutions, but l not that much on ICT risk, which is I would say one of the I would say equal ones among those whole family of, for example, of the operational risk. So. Well, what we try to, I would say, to show the best practices, best best approaches to manage those risks, and how management board can challenge the the decision of the, I would say, risk managers, security ex experts, and and so on. So they are familiar with, the, I would say, terms, best practices, and they can easily, I would say, uh, empower their organization to deal with the risk in much more, I would say, uh, concrete way. You know just not only to have it on a paper you know we have risk appetite risk indicators and so on but make it more you know operational wide operational uh, more operational and to really manage those risks and reduce them to the residual level that's sufficient for that organization yeah and to add we also help organizations to uh, prove that they are compliant with dora and NIST too so this is the holistic view that we are also doing and doing also the implementation and we also prepare them for the audit and to make this whole packet that okay they are compliant with and this is the maturity level that we are at, that we achieved together exactly i mean it's not only to create the the, the documents to to achieve compliance it's the implementation of it that's uh, that's the important thing and that as the mayor put it we're trying to, I would say, help the organizations to do the implementation in a smart way, you know, to reutilize the 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 efforts that we have, you know, on other organizations to make it more, to use the best the best approaches that we currently see in the market, you know, and do the testing, for example, of incident management, you know, how to respond to certain events because with Dora and as to the incident management is, you know, really, really important because the the deadlines for the reporting for managing the incidents are quite quite low so each organizations are facing here with a lot of challenges how to identify those incidents and how to uh how to i would say contain them so and in the end of course report them to the regulators so training on that areas and not only i would say having the documents but to continue to test how to respond to different type of these events is really really i would say uh really beneficial to organizations in the end. Mm -hmm. And a lot of customers has a lot of processes already done. So usually they have ISO 271 or other uh, compliant requirements already done. So we have to also, as you said, work s smart. So they already have this compliant global um, landscape and now it's Dora and NIST2 is a new part of it and we have to see how for an organization how to put this part not to make the the whole new effort just to see what did you achieve by doing ISO certifications and just put the extra effort and focusing what is a Dora emphasizes on and then focusing on that uh, missing parts for instance like you said ICT risk management led by the um, the management board and so on and role based training so just focusing on the on the pillars of the of the compliant part thank you very much hope this was interesting for everyone we hope so thank you thank you